Hello, Magic Monkeys. How are you today? I'm doing awesome. It is in the afternoon. I shot this a little bit later today than usual, but I feel like, feel like I don't know. It's been a good day so far. I, don't, I can't complain. So if you're watching this, I mean, to miss class today, and um, that's okay. I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're in a good spot. I hope you're happy. I hope you've had some good food today. I hope you've done something that relaxes you and Puts you in the right spot. Hope those around you are well too. Hope everybody, hope everybody where you are is doing well. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run you guys through some reminders, and I'm going to run you guys through all the things we talked about today, and just kind of give you some general hints and helps to get you guys through. So the reminders: um, Don't forget Friday is uh, Friday at midnight is the is the cutoff for everything second quarter. Um, now listen, if if life happens, if things happen, send me an email. Let me know. Send me a chat. Let me know. And um, I'll look for stuff maybe on Saturday. But uh, please talk to me if that's going to be the case. Don't take it. Don't take advantage of my goodwill uh, without talking to me. Uh, learn to advocate for yourself. Learn to ask for the things you need. People don't always have to say yes, but in this case, I'm probably going to. Um, I, I'm going to work on my grades on Sunday. So as long as you talk to me, I'm willing to take things a little bit later than that Friday deadline. But I would like to stick to the Friday deadline. Um, in other news, the Dream Project is due tomorrow. I've got about five or six of them from people. That's great. I really appreciate that. But the rest of you guys need to crack a lacking on that because that thing is due by midnight tomorrow. Again, life happens, but but do your best to get that in. Um, if you've got questions about anything else, we are going to take a test on Friday. But if you have questions on anything else, please let me know. Let me know how I can help. Um, let me know what you want to know about, and um, I'll do my best to, to get you taken care of. Okay. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about dreaming and we're going to look at dream basics. And again, let me know if you have any questions, or you need any help. Uh, don't forget to send out those, those asks if you, uh, if you need something. Okay. All right. So for starters, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the purpose of dreaming. And we're going to talk about three and I'll throw you a bonus fourth, not a bonus fourth. I necessarily believe in, but I don't want to discount it completely. And, um, what I'm going to say first, before I get into this, we're going to look at the purpose of dreams here. What, what, why do we dream? The why. And the reality of it is we don't know. We don't know exactly why. We don't know why the stories. We don't know why the randomness. We don't know why, what water means, what, what fire means. Why is your hair falling out? Why are your teeth falling out? Why are you naked in public, but no one notices? We don't, we don't know. We, we just don't know. And there's a lot of theories. A lot of people have made careers out of trying to figure out the why. And, and we may never know the why. We may, we may find out that these three leading theories are garbage. Maybe it's a fourth thing. Maybe it's a fifth thing. Maybe it's the millionth thing. We don't know. But we will. We might someday. We will. We're trying. There are people trying to figure it out. And so um, aside from, you know, Pluto digging through bones in his dream, and I suppose that's a dog's dream, is um, there's, there's three leading theories for why we dream. And then, I'll, like I said, I'll throw you a bonus four. The first is to process information while the brain is restoring chemicals and the body is resting. Okay, so let's picture it this way. Um, I got gas yesterday for my car. I went to a quick trip. I pulled out my debit card. I ran it. I pushed all the buttons I needed to push. I put the pump thing in my car, and then it happened. The, the, the greatest thing ever for my ADHD brain, GSTV kicked on. The gas station TV channel that now comes on the screens of many gas stations, including our local our local quick trip. Uh, if you're from Wisconsin, you get it. You get it. Quick trip is it's a national treasure. A national treasure. Mount Rushmore, the Washington Monument, the Golden Gate Bridge, the Alamo, quick trip. Uh, anyway, um, and I'm standing there and I'm watching gas station TV and they give me a word of the day and there's some business briefing from cheddar and some internet story. It was something about an uncle and a little kid pouring orange juice into a cup and all the, the likes they've gotten on TikTok or Insta or something like that. And, and I'm just, I'm a zoning, man. I'm just, I'm enjoying life. Pandemonium, I think was the word and stuff like that. And also click my gas is pumped and I put it back in and I'm like, second of all, me thing. And I'm like, Oh, it's over. I get it back in my car. And so it's like, while that gas is being pumped, gas station TV gives me something to do. And I think in a way, this theory lends itself to this idea that while, while you're healing and while you're resting and while your brain is restoring vital chemicals and, you know, all those restorative processes are happening, it's like, it's like every once in a while, it's like, oh, here's something to do. Have a little fun. Here's a commercial. Here's a little TV show for you. Enjoy this. So it's just kind of a byproduct of the 
resting process. The second is that we dream to solve problems that, and, there, and there's two ways to look at this. Um, the first way is some, a lot of dreams are about regular everyday things. Now those might not be the ones you remember, but you might dream about school. You might dream about home. You might dream about work. You might dream about the boyfriend or girlfriend and the goods and the bads and take them all. And there you have the facts of life. Anyway, um, you might dream directly about those situations. And if so, they can give you some indications into some possible solutions for issues or even how to deal with things that are just going on that are going well. And so those real life dreams kind of give you a window into possibilities. Now, at the same time, a lot of dreams are symbolic. They don't seem to be about the things that, that they're about. At least that's what people think. Again, a lot of, a lot of, oh, on this one. So for instance, if I had a dream about, um, I don't know, um, but let's say everywhere I went, I had to carry a heavy weight on my shoulders. And no matter what I did, this heavy weight was there. And, um, you know, it was, it was weighing me down at work. It was weighing me down at home. And eventually I figured out a way to get the heavy weight off my shoulders. What does the heavy weight stand for? Well, maybe it stands for trying to decide what I'm going to do when people come back to school and COVID and my family and things like that. Maybe the heavy weight is some big choice I have to make. Maybe it's the stress that's weighing me down. Maybe a certain animal stands for a certain person, or maybe water is, is this or that. But if you can sift through all that stuff, if you can pop through and peel it back and figure out what all is, you have the answer to everything. The answer to literally everything. And, and so a lot of people think it's it's to solve problems. And then you have this theory that it's like random stimulation of the brain. You go into REM sleep and poof, the part that's got fire trucks and poof, the part that's got elephants and poof, the part that's got giraffes. And so what happens is now in your dream, a fire truck, there's a fire in your block and a fire truck pulls up and all the firemen are, are elephants, but the ladders are all giraffes. And so the elephant firemen are climbing the giraffes to put out the fire. And you're like, what was that? Well, poof, poof, it was random pops of activity that caused the story. It would be like if I, if in creative writing, Blythe has looked at you guys and said, okay, I'm going to throw three words at you. And you have to use those three words as the basis of your story. Giraffe, elephant, fire truck, go. And that was what you wrote. Now, we, we can't say that they're all right. We can't say that they're all wrong. I actually tend to think that it's a combination of all three. I, I really, really do. But I mean, I have no proof. Again, we could end up with option D at some points. Now, there is one less popular from a scientific standpoint option that some people do talk about. And I'm going to throw it out there because I know some of you guys, you, you're into this kind of stuff. Some people think our dreams are predictors of our future. And I'm not just talking about deja vu dreams. I'm talking about that, that dream about the elephant climbing giraffe firefighters might be some might be something to learn from that somehow, if only you could decode it. And, and so those are the leaders in the in the clubhouse, I guess I would say. But here we go. We'll talk a little bit about dreams. Now, these are things that you guys have asked me over the course of the last couple of weeks and been like, hey, see, what, what about this? And I'm like, ooh, I'm going to write that down. Hey, see, what about that? Ooh, let me write that down. And so I thought I would answer some of the questions that you guys had about dreaming. First of all, common, cream, dream, common thing I've been asked. See, but I don't remember my dreams. How, how many are other people remembering? How likely is it I remember my dreams? I've had a lot of those kinds of things. Or I remember 20. Is that normal? Well, the experts claim that we probably only remember about 5% of our dreams or one out of 20. We've had about 45 days that we've been working on this figure. Five, um, five, three to five dreams a night. You know, you're, what would that work out to be? Let's see, 45 times five is 225. 5% of that is probably like about, I don't know, 11, 10, something in that ballpark. So if you're in the average range, you've probably remembered somewhere between six and 12-ish dreams, but maybe you didn't remember any. Well, that makes up for the fact that I remember 23 and someone else remembered 21. I do know this based on the things that I read. You are far more likely to remember a dream that has a strong emotional tie. If it's really, really funny, if it's really, really happy, if it's really, really scared or really, really sad, you are more likely to remember that. I am way more likely to remember getting chased by a chainsaw killer than I am coming to school and teaching like it's a regular day because there's just a strong emotion hooked to it. Um, the second thing is somebody asked me, how many different kinds of dreams are there? Like, And I'm not 100% sure that I'm answering this correctly, but I found like five-ish types of dreams. Obviously, the regular dreams that you have that the dream of falling, the dream of uh, being naked in public, your teeth falling out, being replaced by a giant carrot, wh whatever. Okay, so the regular dreams, boom, number one, most common. Second kind is daydreaming, um, where you're just sitting there and all of a sudden, you might be thinking about, you know, the world. You might be thinking about things. You may be making something up. You may actually be like fire truck, elephant, uh, climbing giraffe ladders. Huh. Kind of an interesting scene. 
Look at the way that guy's putting that fire out. It, you're going to daydream. Um, common, very common. You're not odd if you daydream a lot. You're not odd if you daydream about weird things. You're not odd if you're just like sitting there going, oh, I wonder what summer's going to be like. Oh, man, that's going to be awesome. Anyway, um, I did find, because someone brought this up. Thanks, thanks, Kalen. Um, maladaptive daydreaming. Um, where your daydreams don't go the way that they're supposed to. They're, they're a little bit different. I found two kinds of maladaptive daydreaming. One's where people actually act out their daydreams, but they don't realize they're doing it. So imagine being in class and someone's daydreaming and they have maladaptive daydreaming and they're daydreaming about being a ballerina. So they come up and they're all, and then they, and they shuffle around and they spin. And they don't know they're doing it. The other kind is there are people that spend so much time daydreaming that they're not sure what's reality and what's not. They like, they, they spend so much time daydreaming that almost starts to become like what their normal life is versus forever. Now this is kind of does go into a, like a psychological disorder um, type definition, that kind, but um, I didn't find it to be a very common. Okay. The next kind of dreaming would be lucid dreaming. That's where you become aware that you're dreaming and therefore you have more control. You're able to change your setting. You're able to change all these things. You could be like, I don't want to be chased by the serial killer. I want to be on a roller coaster. And so you're on a roller coaster. Well, now I want to be eating dinner. And, oh, this guy's scaring me. I don't have a weapon. I would like to have a chainsaw, please. I don't know why I'm obsessed with chainsaws today. All right, but lucid dreams, you're, you're aware that you're dreaming and therefore you have power or control. This does kind of get listed in the same thing as false awakening dreams. I'm not sure why they get classified together. But in a false awakening dream, you dream that you wake up, that you get out of bed, that you start your daily routine, that you go to school, whatever it might be. Now, false awakening dreams seem very realistic. Sometimes the person's aware that they're dreaming, and sometimes they think they're awake and going through these things. Um, interesting thing, I found it might be a reason why people weather bed um, when they're a little bit older because they – they did their, their awakening dream, false awakening dream that they're going to the bathroom. They've got up and gone to the bathroom. And so whoosh, they let their bladder go. Um, but again, very uncommon. Uh, I did find a couple of people that have had these before. And when I say uncommon, I mean, it's not weird if you have it. It's just not like you're dreaming this every night. Um, nightmares, which we'll talk about a little bit tomorrow. And then recurrent dreams. Recurrent dreams are dreams that you have kind of over and over again, or like these things come up over and over again. Um, I found it was really common for people who had um, like really traumatic experiences to have recurrent dreams of that event. So people that were like abuse survivors, soldiers. Um, I even read an article about this guy that he claimed he only dreamt about his grandmother right around the week of the anniversary of her death. He said he didn't dream about her at all other than right around the time of year that she died. And so it seems like maybe those recurrent dreams have to do with maybe trauma or things that we were still dealing with. Um, but, you know, I, again, had a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I, I've got something I dreamed about that, you know, it's not the nicest thing. So, all right, dream content, a lot of people believe it's symbolic. Like it, like the like the things you read in English stories where they say, well, but it's not just an eye on a billboard or it's not just an old man carrying a cross. It's, it's this, it means this. I, what does this poem mean to you? But like <clears throat> we know when these next couple things kind of go together, we know that a lot, most dreams are probably just boring everyday life dreams. And then we dream about people we know doing things that we do, talking about the things that we talk about, boring, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but we also know that a lot of people dream about water and fire. We know that a lot of things range from like normal to bizarre. We also know that some of the most common dream themes are being chased or being pursued by somebody for some reason. We know that people dream about work and school and like their normal everyday routine. Water again comes up. Sex is a very common dream topic. And last but not least, falling, as you can see in that visual. Now, sometimes falling is accompanied by something called a hypnagogic jerk or a hypnic jerk. That's where you're asleep and you get that, that muscle movement and sometimes you wake up because you're like, what the heck just happened? A lot of reasons. I found a lot of reasons for that, a lot of possibilities. Some people think you're more likely to have hypnic jerks if you are stressed out if you use too much caffeine, certain kinds of drugs. Um, some people think you have that when you're having the falling dream, right, as you wake up. Some people said that it was when your body was coming out of REM, you're coming out of that paralysis, and now you can move, and, and there's like, oh, okay, whoa, okay. Another spot said that the reason you have hypnic jerks or hypnagogic jerks is because you're super relaxed, and your body almost feels like it's sinking into the bed, and it doesn't want to be, like, quick sanded, sucked up, so, ugh, you jerk. All right. Um, a couple of the last things. Um, I, I read a source that said that if you dream in a foreign language, that's a sign that you're becoming fluent in that language. So my bilingual friends who may be watching this, do you dream in both languages? 
Um, last but not least, deja vu. The idea that you dream about things and then they come true later. There's kind of two different schools of thought on this. The scientific school of thought doesn't love the idea of deja vu, like you can't prove it. If we have dreams about common people doing common things, saying the things that they always say, of course there's a chance that that thing might happen because that's what you're dreaming about. You had a dream in your video that I said, you had a dream that you're watching a video and I said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I say that all the time. If you're like, oh my God, no, I, I, I'm me. That's my thing. I say it, get over it. Okay. But then there are other people who think that deja vu are, um, they're, they're, they're more powerful. Some people think it's a guide to former life. Some people, some things from your former life coming out. Some people think that you deja vu is almost like a form of ESP that's more common, like being able to move objects with your mind or being able to read minds. We all have the ability to dream about our future. We just remember a very small chunk of it. Um, going back to the, the dream themes on the last slide. Okay, so that's it for today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit about what things might mean in dreams. We're going to talk a little bit about night terrors and nightmares. And then on Thursday, we're going to get into sleep disorders and some practical issues of sleep. Friday is test day. Get the dream project on. Miss you guys a ton. See you soon.